Well, thanks for stopping by. Today, we're discussing the future of IT partner marketing and channel strategy with our facilitator, Michael Franken. He specializes in helping IT industry firms to excel in disruptive, competitive B2B markets. He brings knowledge he's acquired from over 20 years as a consultant and marketing leader at IBM and Cisco. Welcome, Michael. Thank you. So theme number four is partner marketing best practices and cautions with our great panel of experts. Let's get into the executive summary. This is a pretty good information, right? Yeah, we were pleased to be able to, in the first three themes, look at a number of specific areas, uh, metrics, how to stand out in a partner's portfolio, how vendors and partners can work together when there's multiple companies collaborating. So what we looked at here was the best practices or things that stood out that companies should avoid. And we really found that there's three core items that stood out and they have all, all three of them have to do with managing the ability to be strategic and structured at the same time as taking advantage of new opportunities and being creative. So vendors need to be proactive in harnessing their strengths. Sometimes companies that are doing really well at something take it for granted and they sort of lose track about differentiating with that capability. Secondly, companies collaborating should always make sure that they're sticking with the latest in incentives and motivating factors for their sales reps. And third, it's helpful to always bring in an outside firm to get a fresh perspective, not only on what you're doing well, but what your field contributors see that they could do better and what their requirements for success would be. So let's get into key point number one, which is adopting and adjusting kind of everything is what you're saying here, right? Well, it, it's all about having a strategy and a structure and processes and a program that you believe in with confidence, which gives you the ability to make adjustments at specific times where there's unique opportunities. For instance, system integrators or services firms often have an account coverage model where there's a senior partner or a senior leader that manages a relationship, but they're very good at swapping in and out specialists for horizontal capabilities, whether that's a technology component or an application for a particular business area, or a skill to help deal with uh, adoption or rollout or performance management or whatever. So it's a balancing of having this overarching stabilizing role and an account or in relationship with partners that allows you to then be flexible with specific elements underneath that. So in key point two, you sort of talk about best ways to motivate, right? Talk about this. Yeah, this was interesting. The panel had a number of suggestions here and also some stories that they had found to be, be notable. One mentioned that they had been exposed uh, multiple times to companies where the incentives for partner reps were paid out a full year after the sale. Wow. That was due to just the cadence of traditional bonus systems and the way the processes worked at the vendor. But these bonuses, even if they were in some reasonable amount, being a year after the sale, were, were not going to have the same effect. The second thing it, that was mentioned in three or four different posts from our subject experts had to do with non-financial incentives and the need to be really responsive to the needs of reps. And this goes from some reps valuing the opportunity for getting soft skills training on negotiating or relationship management or influencing skills to having the chance to uh, sit in the corporate box at a sporting event. These uh, non-financial benefits that and, and incentives that can be offered probably have the most impact on generating loyalty among sellers as, as anything. So in key point three, you talk about don't overplay. I'm kind of curious, what does this mean? Tell me about this. Yeah, uh, so sometimes when there's success with a particular strategy, whether those are webinars or events or or a certain demand generation or marketing campaigns, companies tend to focus on those tactics, tactics without necessarily having a multidimensional plan. And it's important to keep have a vibrant pipeline of new prospects as well as uh, active potential buyers that are in consideration and looking at your products and customers who are looking to always to buy more. So it's important to have this commitment to an a strategy for a channel tactics that both builds early uh, interest on the part of clients and helps close and, and generate revenue on the back end. And this has this whole life cycle approach 
is consistent with the kind of view that partners have because partners are closest to the customer and they want to be in a position to react most effectively with the vendor support to different points along the marketing cycle. Could you elaborate on this uh, this final sentence here? Quickly capitalize on new client triggers for buying. Yeah. So client triggers could come from anywhere. They could be you know, related to COVID when that came up. And there was, of course, a great concern for companies to want to have a remote workforce and also deal with resiliency and security in new ways. And also um, opportunities for buying when there's a change in economic conditions to reduce costs, such as moving from a, uh, a fixed cost infrastructure to one where it's variable and as a service, or where company has a specific need over a particular uh, increase in activity that could be related to you know, end of quarter for retail establishment, or just something that happens in the governmental or uh, regulatory area. So it's important to be ha have sort of a, almost ready to go marketing campaign that can be plugged in with any number of different uh, buying characteristics or drivers, mm -hmm. but you, you, having something that's that's ready to go relatively quickly. That makes sense. So your final point, key point number four, is really um, important because it's about these third-party marketing services, which we can all benefit from from time right. to time. Is that right? Yeah. So incre increasingly, there are third-party providers who can help with any number of uh, aspects of uh, vendor and partner channel marketing. Part of the the rise in these services is due to the number of applications and IT systems that are available for more functions. So that's created a need for specialists in a number of different technology areas and business areas, whether it's partner engagement to it's for partners to become more comfortable and loyal with their own work processes to other aspects like generating demand from multiple sources of, of uh, customer contact. So third parties that have specialized in channel marketing or incentives or ecosystems or uh, portfolios with alliances can be really helpful in not only identifying best practices, but also helping to uncover where your field reps or others that are in the marketing and sales process have ideas for where the business can do better. Well, you certainly uncovered some really great information here. I appreciate you sharing it. The panel did a great job. We should take a moment to recognize these top three performers on this particular panel. Um, but overall, Michael, I think you've done a fantastic job. We really appreciate all this uh, information you've been sharing with us today. Again, that's Michael Franken. He specializes in helping IT industry firms to excel in disruptive, competitive B2B markets bringing knowledge he's acquired from 20 years as a consultant and marketing leader at IBM and Cisco. And Michael, we will talk again. Thank you.